All right, we are going to head into the draft of uh, the second game of this best of three any moment now. And I am really curious to see what the, the priority is going to be. Obviously, we've talked about Gyrocopter. We know that maybe Earthshaker is not the way to go. Uh, we do have a change. And look at that. I mean, we started previous game off with 74% win rate or uh, prediction ability uh, 60, for uh, five. Hmm? It was like 64. Yeah, 64. Sorry. My bad. And this 64. time, 52.9. Wow. So sniper is really highly prioritized. So, yeah. yeah. This means, in fact, yeah, it, the fact that it's 52.9 means probably Sniper would have been the choice that Open Eye would have made in that in that position, or maybe something something that's very close. So the Viper and the Witch Doctor were uh, on the side of OG previous game, and this time uh, AI will show them how it's done. So it's better, right? Uh, what was the end percentage last game? Uh, 70 something. So it was like 75 or something. Yeah, so it should be better. Nice, we're gonna do yeah. it this time. We've cut it a lot. 60 percent's not bad. They're taking a lot of heavy harass here from this duo lane of the Gyro and Crystal Maiden. It's back towards mid Thompson. Actually, nearly dying here. In fact, well, he does. The, the poison was too much. And we're seeing once again in these first few minutes in terms of the farm, people are coming out pretty even in CS. Down bottom, Seb's in trouble though. Gyro takes the kill. Seb did commit for the Crystal Maiden, but OpenAI taking the favorable trade. Right, and part of that is because Earthshaker doesn't do anything for them past the Fisher usage. I'll see up top. Turn here with the Maledict on to Anna. Anna, it's got the dark pack. They do have a Viper in this lane as well now, so OG have to be careful. Again, the Gyrocopter just racking up these kills. He was able to kill off Jerax once more. As this chase continues top, South will be popped, but he gets cancelled here by the stun. Open AI diving past the tower with the damage from the Viper and the Sven. They'll claim the Slark's life. They'll get no tail as well. The AI turning it up early here in this game too. Like, Thompson took like 250 Aww. HP just from one poison attack in Nether Toxin. And Anna is having a very tough time oh. here on this top lane as he dies once more. Six minutes in, open AI taking this tier one tower. A lot more dominant in the lane. I mean, phase. Seb, he's trying to kill this Crystal Maiden, but the Crystal Maiden is just baiting Seb in. The backup's there from the Gyrocopter, and this combo that's causing issues for Seb in the lane will continue to cause issues as the game continues. Seb will try and duke it out around the trees. He's doing a pretty good job of oh, it. Oh, no fact, way! He's out no way. the AI. Seb <laughs> will escape with a TP out. He's outplayed the AI. Still, just being constantly torn up every single lane he shows up into. See an attempt here onto the Sven. Uh, these two heroes do not have the damage output to immediately kill him. They will find the follow-up wraparound kill onto towards him. At least they're trying, but with that Warcry out, he's able to run away. Another Fisher comes out. Surely this kill's going to be there, but no, a stun from the Sven. Holds back the Shaker, and he oh. TPs out on 30 HP. Open AI gets out of there with the Sven his core online to a point where he's able to run around cutting creep ways, but he just couldn't really get to that. I mean, see there the side, Jarek's trying to step forward, but they turn immediately towards and they have the Viper Strike out upon him. Shrapnel's down here from Thompson in an attempt to hold. Assassinate will not get the kill off, and now again the CM goes for the ult, but they do have to disable. Hex comes out from No Tail. They'll kill off the Crystal Maiden, but open AI Viper diving past the tower on towards Thompson. The Sven coming back in on minimal HP to throw that stun off, secure the kill as OpenAI again getting the favorable trade, another tower taken. They are playing at a ferocious speed here in the second game, be able to have an impact. As at the moment, they're just getting picked apart elsewhere. We're gonna see the Sven commit in onto Thompson. Thompson does have backups, but both No-Tail and Jerax splitting OpenAI apart as Jerax will focus the Viper. Seb comes in with the TP, they have surrounded the Sven. OpenAI trying to stand their ground as this Sven, but he's stuck in the trees. They'll lose the Sven, OpenAI. The Viper's still good to fight, and they've also now rotated in the Gyrocopter. Seb caught on the front lines. Siphon will not keep him alive, or will it? He gets a second one out. It's a good amount of, of sustain, but surely not enough, as the poison will be there for on the Viper. Open AI, AI, AI getting both of the kills. Open AI as it is, they're not going to make mistakes. They're not going to throw away this lead. You have to outplay them. You have to outmaneuver them. And at this rate, OG there struggling to certainly do that as they'll lose tops and Seb trying to move in. But the Crystal Maiden with that massive amount of damage coming out from the ultimate just stands her ground. Two dead. There will be a buyback here as Topson trying for some open AIS tactics to try and bring the game back around. But I don't know how much this buyback is going to do for him. They're still without Seb. 
as Seb just failing to have any sort of impact this game as the Death Prophet after a terrible laning stage against the Gyrocopter and the Crystal Maiden. Open AI, 14 minutes in, they're up to the high ground, onto the Tier 3 tower. Anna will be able to jump away, doesn't even manage to kill off the Courier. The Viper godlike diving past towers, killing off Topson. It's a dieback from the Sniper. Seb, he's going to try and lead forward, but the Cast Bounces are out. Seb stands too close to Jerex. Jerex is in trouble as well as he's forced away. Open AI taking that top Tier 3 tower. They're onto the barracks. It's only 14 minutes in cap. 15 minutes in, taking a barracks. An incredibly fast timing here from the AI. Jerax will fall as he tries to get some damage out onto the Viper, but the poison is too much for this underfarmed, underleveled Shaker. No Tail will try and get back. Seb attempting everything to hold them off with the Siphons, with the Crypt Swarm, but he doesn't have the damage. He does not have the HP to survive. Seb is dead. The Rack's taken and open AI. They are not leaving the space surely anytime soon. Well, they had to back up actually because the Tier 2 still stands in the middle lane. We're going to watch uh, Jerax probably die again. Yep, and almost certainly Seb as well. Jerax does not have the damage. Seb does have Anna with him, but this Slark only has Treads and a Wraith Ban. There's nothing he can do. He's got a Shadow Dance popped. He will be able to steal up a bit of Essence Shift, but the cast bounces out onto no -tail. Stun as well, out onto the Slark. Triple kill for the open AI Viper. Topson, he's desperately looking for this Crystal Maiden, but the movement's here with the Shadow <laughs> Amulet, dancing herself away, utilizing the Invis to make sure the Topson cannot get that final hit on her, continuing to use the Amulet, getting away out of this. Topson, can he find this? He does get the vision for the Assassinate, but oh, there's the stun. disable. The stun comes out from the cast, cancelling the Assassinate. The Crystal Maiden kept safe and alive. There looks like there's very little chance of OG turning this one around. They will find the Witch Doctor pushing out alone. They may be able to at least claim the life of a Witch Doctor. Can they get more though? No, the Crystal Maiden again using the ult. Enchant Turner comes out with the Artichoke. Does cancel the Onimo from the CM. Finger comes out, but it's not enough damage to kill off the Crystal Maiden. There'll be buybacks from both sides. No Tail gets back in. So does the OpenAI Witch Doctor. As OpenAI wants to continue the aggression, the Gyro up onto the high ground, past the Tier 3, past the Barracks, playing so aggressive here. Seb has to be careful of potential wraparounds. They're pushing in both lanes at the same time, the AI. Both the middle lane and the bottom lane under threat. Also the team as well of OG getting dove upon up past the tier fours. Anna's trying to come in. Open AI, they're low but they have the heals. The voodoo restoration from the Witch Doctor meaning that OG cannot finish off any of these kills. Anna will fall again on the slug. He has got a buyback. He will use it. But OG, they are just crumbling and getting entirely crushed here in this game too. And it looks like there's very little chance for them to play anything back in response as once again, AI just collapse onto OG. They cannot fight back at this point. Their heroes, their draft, it does nothing when open AI's heroes are this far ahead. I mean, if they can get this kill, it would be an absolutely huge run. He's 18-09 at the moment, but they, they cannot they do not have any sort of damage to beat down this Viper as once again OG just getting absolutely flawed in any attempt of a team fight. AI, like, they never... <laughs> <laughs> the trees come out. The offerings as well of mangoes to try and keep the open AI at, a, at bay. As OG almost certainly conceding here in this game too. I mean, 40 to 6, 19 minutes in. Yeah, it just looks fantastic. I wonder, do I mean, they have a four staff or something to save If they get this them? kill, it's worth so much. Are but they they're not going getting to, it. Owen? They're not getting it. Can they it. even do it? This Viper will not die. Every single time you Eight. think like, oh, this hero, he's too far forward. He's too low. He's, he's like wow. going to get picked off. But there's always enough heroes behind him. And with the Ancient falling, there is no hope here for OG. <laughs> they have a fortification. But with Anna dead, 41k lead. They're, they're asking for the finishing blow to come in from the open AI as open AI almost playing around with them at this point. Finger attempted onto the gyro. The stun from No Tail misses. Topson's AFK. He's had enough at this one. As the agent will fall. And that is GG. Game over. Open AI taking game two, taking the series two to zero. But honestly, this second game in particular. This is a fantastic example of something that, as a player of Dota 2, as a professional, you watch how OpenAI just absolutely crushed this 20 minutes of gameplay.
and there's got to be a lot to learn from the way that they played this game. Oh, absolutely. I think there's, um, especially like positioning wise, um, them always being able to read, to play around each other, right? Like the AI plays a, a true five man. They actually do not do a whole lot of splitting up after the laning phase. They just always kind of play around each other. At most, maybe there's like a three-man squad and a two-man squad. But every single time you think that there's a hero that's like out of position, there just always seems to be enough backup behind him to, to take the fight. Sort of OG, as we see, just looking to be in a in sort of shock after that game. One of the, the quickest beatdowns they probably ever had in Dota 2. 20 minutes of gameplay that they just could not get themselves in. You can. I'm sure they want to try and have another go, but as it stands, that is it. It's 2-0. OG will not take this series. A big success here for OpenAI5. But uh, there we have it. Of course, so ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for OG, though, for coming and trying their best. It was not good enough, but they tried. They certainly did. But OpenAI5 stepping it up here at another event and playing at a level that we have not seen from them and I don't think we've seen from many other teams as this open AI looks to be unstoppable, Cap. Truly incredible that the growth that they've had. It really does. And with that, we'll pass you back over to the panel for a wrap-up of this incredible series from open AI. AI, we knew that they were doing well against other teams as well, and, and you guys said that the first game of the series normally is that's when AI crushes their opponent, and the second game will be a little bit more even. Didn't yeah, that that, that's not, I guess, how it worked out. But <laughs> I guess uh, even though we won the match, I feel like we're honestly just really thrilled that we got the chance to come and be on stage with OG, who we know is just a really amazing team in their own right. And to be able to, over the course of this, this last year, get the bot to the, uh, the, get five to the point where they could sit on the stage and, and play and have this amazing result, um, um, I'm really like, excited and grateful for. Yeah, and as, uh, as we see here, this is the experience of AR5 against uh, Lithium, SG, and Alliance. And of course, now also OG. This is over the last couple of months, or over the last, since TI 8. So they, uh, they are undefeated right now, Blitz. That's scary. No, I think it's dope. Like, yeah? Dude, I become like a believer. Because I, I, I've played against it like three times, I've lost every time. Everyone always flames me. They always say like, well, it's easy. Because when you watch it play, like, it seems really basic. It feels like they're making inefficient movements, like the buybacks and the weird try lanes that they do. Everyone, I, I got so many messages from pros like, why didn't you just do this? It's like, we thought about that too. And it just feels like at some point, it gets so muddled in your head that you're not really playing Dota anymore. Like you're overthinking what the bot does. You're like, well, do we do this because of this? Has it already thought of this? And at some point, it just feels like it gets into your own head and you tilt yourself. It's hard for us to speculate also on exactly what the bot is thinking or what they're trying to do. Like, again, a lot of what we're doing is setting up these very general learning algorithms and systems and then just letting it go, letting them play the games and figure out um, what they do. You definitely notice points where they're being kind of inefficient or they're not doing exactly the right thing. But for the most part, it seems like they understand the game certainly much better than, than uh, David and I. Yeah, I remember there was a turning point where when it was first training, it would do something that looked dumb. And we'd say, that's dumb. We must have a bug somewhere. We can go fix it. And we would go and we fix it. And then after a couple of months, they'd do something like, wait, that looks dumb. And then 20 seconds later, there'd be some consequence we hadn't foreseen. And it turns out it was the right thing to do. The series 2-0 in favor of AI5. Jay, what is your takeaway from the series? What's, what does this result mean for you? I think it's really exciting in general just to see the, the progress that AI has made, that the, the kind of progress these systems can make overall. And um, I think in general we'll be continuing to push these capabilities further and further over the, the coming years. And I find that really exciting because I think um, AI really has a lot of potential to create positive impacts in the world.